In this episode of Sailing Wind Therapy, we visit Zoo Martinique. We try to troubleshoot a problem with our inverter. We explore the ruins from a volcanic explosion. Dig into whatever has been clogging our holding tank, gross. And we hike up the volcano Mount Pele. Well, we've had quite an unexpected start this morning to our day. We were supposed to leave today. It's uh, 7 in the morning now. Uh, we, we had dinner last night with some friends on Blue Mango, and we talked about how much we love our anchor and we never drag. And surely there's a sailing god up there that thought that was hilarious. So we, we anchored in this bay for like a week. And everything's fine. We have a conversation that we never drag, and we love our anchor. And sure enough, at six in the morning, our anchor alarm starts going off. There's wicked wind. We wake up, and we're like 40 feet behind, right in front of a monohull that we were dragging into. So we jumped up. Adrian was a champ. Um, she just jumped up in her clothes. It's, it's pouring out. She, she goes, grabs the anchor. I go and turn the engine on really quickly. First thing we want to do is you want to get the boat in control. So turn the engines on, go forward. That basically prevents us from smacking into the boat behind us. So we got things under control. We unplugged our solar panels, which we keep on the, on the trampoline. Uh, and uh, we started going. I think we handled it great. And uh, I just have the jib out. It's... Uh, 15 to 20 knots of uh, true wind, and we're just going like five and a half knots. Um, nice and easy. And, uh, but yeah, it was a really interesting morning how you talk about never dragging that night, and then, and then six in the morning, you start dragging. Anyway, we're off to Anse Darlet in Martinique this morning. We came to the grocery store today. We're in Martinique, and it's actually, it's actually in a mall. So that's the entrance. This is the coffee shop. Oh, and there's the grocery store. Remember when I said that Martinique was the most developed island in all the Caribbean that we've seen? Yeah. Here's proof. What do you think of this place? It's insane. This is the craziest grocery store. They have a Lego aisle. After <laughs> after um, all the grocery stores that we've been to and all the islands, this is a bit of a culture shock. <laughs> we are anchored in Grand Anse Darlet, I believe it's the way you pronounce it, in Martinique, beautiful Martinique. And we're going to go hike uh, to the next beach today. It's like a three mile hike and it should be a lot of fun. No one said that this was going to be uphill. There's a lot of uphill in the Caribbean. There are. Lots of it. It's so good for you. My favorite part about the uphill is the downhill at the end. Yeah. That's my favorite part. It's not my favorite if you go down first. Because then you have to go up when you're tired. Yeah, I hate that. I hate those stupid hikes. We're hiking along this trail. It's called Morn Champagne. It led us to this really cool wall. It looks old. Don't know how old it really is. This cool wall led us to this house up here. I don't think it was a house. I think it was for storage because there aren't any windows. We're 1.1 miles into this 3.2 mile hike. Very hot. Nice, let's go. <laughs> I hate it when I touch my glasses with my fingers and they're sweaty because now my glasses are all smeary. Wow, that's pretty. That's really pretty. How come we didn't anchor over here? That's another egg we can do. 1.42 miles and it's been all up 
I feel pretty good about that. But after doing all this, I won't feel guilty about eating ice cream later. It's always something. Now we have some sort of electrical problem on the boat. We don't know if it's our inverter or if it's a GFI outlet or if it's uh, one of our appliances, we're not sure. But the inverter was making a horrible, horrible sound. The DC readout from this color controller was really whacked out. So we've been on the phone, well, on WhatsApp, with Hervé, and he is the electrician who advised us in St. Martin on that solar panel project we did. He has been so nice and so wonderful to help us troubleshoot this um, long distance. And we think, we think it's a faulty GFI on the starboard side of the boat. We're not sure, but we're gonna test it by removing the GFI, GFCI outlet from the port side and replacing it on the starboard and see if that fixes the problem. Crush fingers. It's the electrical organ donor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so the breakers are off, which we knew because you didn't get electrocuted when we switched that out. Yeah. Okay, but in theory, if that GFI, if that GFI outlet was bad yep. and it was causing some sort of a black backflow current to the inverter, right. now that we switched the outlet, if we turn on the inverter, if this one is good and that was the problem, the inverter should not make its horrible right. noise. Right. I'm going to go turn it on. Yeah. Cross your fingers for no horrible noises. You ready? Yeah. Here it goes. Ugh. It's making the noise. So are we safe to say that the problem is with the inverter? Yeah, that could that could be a symptom. Not the it could, that could be a symptom, not the problem. The GFI popping could be the symptom and not the problem. Yeah. Okay, that is not the problem. I guess we'll try to find the electrician tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah. It is a beautiful, beautiful sailing day today. We left from um, Petite Anstarlet this morning. Had a really nice, nice visit there, but we're going up to St. Pierre today. We're gonna hike a volcano. Just a bunch of really beautiful stuff up here. Go to the zoo. I really like Martinique. It's one of those islands I really think, you know, if I was gonna move to the Caribbean, maybe I could live here. Wonder if this guy knows that we have right of way. Oh, I guess he does. He just changed course. We're arriving into St. Pierre in Martinique. And I thought the town was gonna to be pretty sketchy. Uh, but this is gorgeous. They have mooring balls for $15 right up front next to town, so we're gonna grab one of those instead of anchoring. Um, in the bay, there's a lot of sunken ships because um, a few years back, they had a massive uh, volcano eruption where like everyone in the town died, except like one guy. And uh, that volcano up there, I think, is the culprit. Uh, so we're just gonna grab a mooring ball. Yeah, but this is really, so far, it's a really beautiful town. And the next couple days, we're gonna go hike up that beast. Let's see how that goes. The mooring balls here are run by the government. The harbor master comes out to greet you and you follow him to the ball that he selects for you. Most of the time, each mooring ball in a field is connected to a slab or a pyramid of concrete or a screw driven into the ground. In this field, each mooring is connected to a concrete slab that's shared with a neighboring ball. Two balls per slab and two slabs per ball. Get your mind out of the gutter. This keeps the balls from swinging as much, but it also increases your chances of snagging a line in your rudder or your props. And the boats do end up getting a little closer to each other. We just got to this cute little town of St. Pierre. It's on the northwest side of Martinique. 
and supposedly this is where all the like the nature stuff is this is where the zoo is and the volcano and lots of great hiking and things like that we're gonna go find Shane and Tanya from Seascape and get some lunch have a nice fun day here we go Your fingers. It's on. It's on? <laughs> I mean, it's a book. You can see it. It's flambeing. What? It's flambeing. It's flambeing. I don't think it's lit. It was. In 1902, Mount Pele exploded. It didn't spew lava, just super hot gases estimated at over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, killing approximately 30,000 people and sinking almost every boat in the harbor. Only one man in town survived, and that was because he was incarcerated in solitary confinement right here. All ruins that are stable enough remain and have been incorporated into the modern day architecture. Martinique is doing a great job at preserving its history. We've been having problems with our holding tank. Um, I really wish that we had recorded when we cleared it ourselves. Um, it was the funniest thing. I never saw Jeff move so fast in his entire life as when he was about to get the contents of the holding tank all over his feet. It was horrible. It was horrible. I still have nightmares <laughs> about that. Anyway, we're still having problems with it. There's something that's clogging the pipe. And um, we know this because we don't put anything, anything down the toilet if it doesn't naturally come out of our body. So there's something in there that keeps clogging it. And I fashioned a flashlight and a mirror at the top access holes to the holding tank. And I looked inside and the anatomy of the tank is there's a deck fitting and the deck fitting comes through the deck, a little curve like this, and then there's a pipe that goes straight down to about this far from the bottom of the holding tank. And the holding tank's pretty big, it's like this tall. And right below that blue, blue pipe is a drain hole that goes down a hose, probably six foot, two inch diameter hose, all the way to the through hull. And um, after looking in there with a mirror and a flashlight, there's something that looks to me like a piece of a plastic ring. I don't know where it could have come from. It did not come out of my body, I'll tell you that right now. I swear. It might have. I really don't know where it came from. It had It had to be... My broken macerator, I think. I don't know. It's, it's awfully big to be part of the macerator. But anyway, whatever it is, we're going to try to get it out. I don't have any... I don't have a grabber of any kind that's going to fit down that pipe. So we have taken this piece of lifeline and we have fashioned. <laughs> We're going to go fishing. <laughs> We're going to go fishing. And I don't know if it's going to work or not. I, I have no idea, but I have no way to grab that. And I don't want to try to push it through because if it gets stuck in either the ball valve underneath the tank or the 90 degree through hole, we got even, you know, more problems. So. Okay, We're let's go try fish. this. Let's go, um, go hold, holding tank fishing. What a gross job. Yeah. Do you want me to? I mean, it's hard for me to get in there, also, right? I just need a flashlight. I need to. I need to secure the flashlight. That's what I need to do. I can get my hand in there and hold the flashlight. Mm, then you can't. I need to see if I can secure this like that. See if that works. Perfect. Okay. I don't want to zoom in on the holding tank, so that would be kind of gross. It is kind of gross. This whole job is gross. We never did get that plastic thing out of the tank and we still have no idea what it is. But for now, things are flowing as they should. So we're going to continue flushing lots and lots and lots of water and hope for the best. So we took a drive today and we're driving up to hike somewhere 
It's really gorgeous yeah. here. Yeah. 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 We're in this uber tiny car. There's Josh. There's this is so funny. my honey. Hi. There's Tamara. <laughs> and yeah, we're in this super tiny car. They can what? barely make yeah. it up the hill. Bella, yeah, don't really follow me. Oh, we're back on the main road. That was the scenic route. Oh, it's lovely. We made our way to Zoo Martinique with Josh and Tamara from Hanu Time. Check out their YouTube channel when you have a chance. These two are so much fun to hang out with. We can't wait to see you again, you guys. I think it's so funny how they We're hiking up Mount Pele today. This is the volcano that exploded in 1902. Look. We just started hiking. This is how high we are. It's just beautiful. And that's where we're going. There's people way up there. Who? Easy. Easy peasy. We're not even halfway up. <laughs> I know, we're so far. And I'm out of breath already. Oh, fuck yeah. We're making our way. This is the hardest hike we've ever done. It's definitely harder than Mount Scenery on Saba. And, um,. I'm gonna put the camera away now so I can have both my hands free. That's the trail. We've gone 0.8 miles. All of it's been straight up and you can't see anything because we are in a cloud. But this is the top. We've reached the top and now it just goes around the crater, but we can't see it because we're in a cloud. Yeah, that's not right. Okay. We're not near the top. We're not? I don't see any more. We gotta go, we gotta go another um, hour to get to the top. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. I'm fucking tired though. So we just can't see the elevation because of the clouds? Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Not you. I don't need to work out today after this. This is good enough. Okay, the clouds are moving out. We're getting close to the top. See those people up there? I'm pretty tired. I don't think we will make it to the top, but maybe not around the whole rim. That's what we're going for. But yeah, it's total cloud down there and it's starting to open up a little bit. But now the clouds just came back in. The cloud is finally breaking. I thought we were at the top. Oh, I was so wrong. It goes way up there. <laughs> see people way up there.
but we got to the top of the first part and it goes straight down through there and then Nope, not today. We're gonna call it an end of here. Right Heading down. We got to the top, but didn't really see anything. Now we're going down and we're like on a plateau or a ridge, I mean. And I'm probably kind of glad we can't see anything because it's, I think it's like you're straight down on either side. Calypso and the captains. Calypso oh and the captain. therapy. Down there somewhere. How's it going, hon? We all need wind therapy.